Hey everybody, I'm Tom from the Deer and Donuts Outdoors crew, and I'm here to bring you the long-awaited review of my Alps Mountaineering Redtail 65 backpack. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. We hope you enjoy this video and all the other videos that we have. If you do, do us a favor. Hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and drop us a comment. The only way we can know what you guys enjoy or don't enjoy is by you letting us know. The best way to do that is in the comments. If you want to see daily posts from us, head over to our Instagram page, Deer and Donuts Outdoors. We post pictures daily, reels from our adventures, and also we post little snippets and we're going to have a YouTube video up so you can easily switch over and enjoy that. <clears throat> now, let's get to why we're here. Backpack reviews. If you aren't new to the page and you've seen Matt's Kifaru uh, 44 mag bag review, you're going to notice that this is quite a bit different. This in my mind is more of a hiking bag than a hunting bag. Matt's bag is more of a hunting bag than a hiking bag, but that doesn't mean that it won't work for you for a hunt. We're going to go into three things that are really the main points of what we look for when we buy a bag. First one's going to be price. The second one is going to be size. And the third one is going to be weight. Now, this particular bag I bought off of REI Outlet for $110. You're not going to find it anymore. Uh, it has since been discontinued, which is why it was in the outlet store. Um, they do still show this bag on their site, Alps Mountaineering, for $240 and also Amazon for 190. But again, through the outlet portion of REI, I got it for 110. And that's the price point that we're gonna stick with for our comparison to uh, Matt's bag. The second feature of this is Redtail 65 means 65 liters. That's the amount of storage capacity that it has. Now, liters and cubic inches are the two measurements. This bag reaches roughly 4,000 cubic inches of storage. Uh, it's internal between the pouches, uh, the zippered uh, pack here up top uh, in the internal portion of the bag. Now, one big comparison to Matt's bag outside of the price is the size. The size of Matt's bag was roughly 4,800 cubic inches, which means you're getting about a fifth more than you are in this bag, which can be a lot. Um, we'll go into some pros and cons of this bag in a little while after we do some features. Uh, but storage is kind of tough sometimes. The third part is weight. Now this particular bag, just under five pounds. Matt's Kifaru 44 mag, six and a half pounds. Now you might think a pound and a half, that's nothing. You're right, it's nothing the very first time that you pick it up, but what about the 20th time? What about on day five when it's raining and you're tired and you've been sleeping on the ground for four nights? and all of a sudden you've got a seven or eight mile hike uh, back down the hill, pound and a half isn't looking so small anymore. Trust me, I've been there, I've lived it. <clears throat> now, a couple things that I really do like about this bag. Even though the internal storage through your main pouch here can be a little bit lacking, you do have a couple extra features, such as the drawstring top. What the drawstring top allows you to do is get a little bit extra here. Maybe this can hold uh, another day's worth of food. Um, maybe this can hold some type of key piece equipment or your rain gear or something along those lines uh, that you might not have been able to fit in the bag if you just tightened it uh, straight down where the waterproofing portion of it comes in. Additionally to that, you have these little pockets on your belt. There's one on each side. What I like about those is they make it very, very easy to reach something without taking the bag off. That's a pretty nice feature to have. Uh, taking the bag off, putting it back on constantly can get very tiring for your shoulders, your back, your legs. Having a couple key pieces of equipment easily accessible goes a long way. Another feature that I really like about this is these, this bag has dual water outlets. And you may be wondering, what's that matter? Well, I'll tell you what it matters. Inside here, you've got a storage pocket for your bladder where you carry your water. Well, let's say you're on a Montana 
bear hunt in the spring and you've got a rifle slung over your shoulder, which shoulder are you going to sling it on? Right, left, doesn't really matter, right? Well, what side's your water hose going to come out of? Because you don't want it to come off the same side as your rifle because it's going to interfere. You don't want to interfere with your water. You don't want your hose to get pinched. You don't want your mouthpiece to be free flowing to where water's coming out of it and you're losing precious water. So the capability of these dual outlets is, is you can pick whatever side you want to put your hose on and it doesn't interfere as much with some of the other equipment that you might be carrying around. Now, the final piece of what I'm going to talk about as far as features go, is this kangaroo pouch here. <clears throat> Again, storage in this bag can be a little limiting. One way to combat that is this kangaroo pouch. You can see here I've unclipped one side, I've stretched the other side out. Uh, if you were to pack out a uh, elk or a bear <clears throat> mats bag uh, that has the frame attached to it, they, they sometimes have neat shelves. Um, they have other features that allow you to carry game out a little easier. You don't have that with this. But the kangaroo pouch does give you a little bit of extra external storage to pack something in so that you can take your hunt uh, the next step further. You can take your game out of the wild, um, deadheads that you might find, antlers, whatever you have. There are some other features such as side pockets, uh, a bottom pocket to keep your sleeping bag and sleeping pad in, uh, as well as an adjustable uh, strap, shoulder strap, so that this can grow with you if you're younger. Uh, or can be adjusted if it's just not quite comfortable. Let's swing over to the cons of this bag. I've already mentioned one of them, and that's storage. It can be a little tough. If you don't pack your bag properly, you're going to run out of room, and that's going to be a bad day. Um, there's not really another way around it with this because this is exactly what the bag is. There's nothing extra that, that I'm not showing you today. That comes into my second con of this bag. You'll see the front here. There's a couple little straps. Uh, you've got other straps that maybe you can clip a water bottle to or, or use some kind of carabiner and, and clip things to. But if you watch the review of Matt's Kifaru bag, you'll see that it's equipped with a bunch of Molly straps. That lets you buy any type of additional pack and put it on the outside of that bag. That increases your storage immensely. You don't get that with this. <clears throat> Third and final portion kind of ties along with that. There's no customization to this. Matt's bag swaps out to a frame if you want to go on a day hunt as opposed to a four or five day hunt. For him, he just swaps his bags out. Again, it is pricier. Uh, you're looking at over $700 for his bag and frame plus another bag to be able to swap out where you're not dealing with that with this. But that con of zero customization kind of brings me into a pro of this bag. And the pro is that this is a multi-use bag. <clears throat> I think this is more of a hiking bag than a hunting bag, uh, whereas Matt's bag is more of a hunting bag than a hiking bag. But what you can do with this inexpensive bag is take it other places. If you wanna go on a trip with your family, there's no reason you can't load four or five people's items in here for a day trip with no problem. You can also do a three day hunt or a day hunt, um, or even just take it over to a buddy's house if you just need some extra storage. It really is multi-use, which is a nice feature. <clears throat> Second thing that I really like about this bag is you can clearly see it's pretty high fizz. In the wilderness, uh, sometimes you have to drop this so you can get the weight off so you can chase down whatever you're going after. Being able to find it quickly so you don't lose everything inside is a pretty key feature. It's also very sturdy. You know, you can see it's a little beat up here, cosmetically only. The features, the zippers, the packs, the clips, the straps, none of these are worn, none of them are broken, and I do beat it up when we're out in the woods. Uh, it's heavy, it's hard to take off. Sometimes you drop it, sometimes it gets banged around. I can honestly say that I haven't seen a single bit of wear and tear uh, on this bag from that. And the third and final thing that I wanna talk about again is the inexpensiveness. I know there are people like Matt that are a buy once, cry once type. Uh, I'm not that way. I bargain shop a little bit and I'm okay spending $100 on some it might only last me a couple of years and then upgrading to the next thing after that. If that's your style, 
this is going to be a good bag for you. If you're not, that's why Matt did a review of his Kefaro bag, because that's going to get you everything that you need there. I really hope you guys enjoyed my review. If you did, do me a favor. Oh, one thing before I forget. In order to help me with that favor, I need you to like the video. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and drop us some comments. Again, Deer and Donuts Outdoors is only as successful as you guys make it. We hope that you come back time and time again to watch our videos. We hope that you interact with us so that we can interact with you. If you like what you saw, come back next week. We're going to have plenty more. Thanks. Take care.